Welcome to our video series on the Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, one of the best novels ever written. In this video we will be discussing the introduction of the main characters in the first book of the novel and how the relationships are established in this book one. How this will work in every video is that I will first give you a summary of the book, including its chapters, and then go over to the analysis. So let's dive into the storyline of book one. The story told was of 13 years ago. Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov, the hero of the book, had a wealthy father who was a landowner. But his father was also known for drinking, womanizing and debauchery. This father, he married a young woman named Adelaida Musov, who was an heiress in an aristocratic family. Despite society's wishes, they eloped and their fights were legendary. Three years later, Adelaida left with a poor teacher and Fyodor turned his house into a harem and portrayed himself as an abandoned victim. One drunken night, Fyodor heard that Adelaida had died, either from typhus or starvation, and praised God for freeing him while crying for her at the same time. Their son, Dmitri, was neglected by his father, Fyodor, forgotten as if invisible. He was taken in first by the faithful Grigory, his father's servant, and then relatives cared for him and he kept aware of who his father was. He didn't like him. He was promised a fine inheritance from his mother of land and money, an inheritance he imagined was far beyond what it really was. He went to military college and lived a life full of women, money and alcohol, being the son of his father. He met his father once but never got on with him, and continued to stay away until his father kept giving him money. When Dmitri was just four, his father Karamazov had taken a second wife, a 16-year-old girl called Sofia Ivanovna. Fyra seemed to have stolen her away from her cruel benefactress and eloped with her. He treated her badly, often hosting wild orgies in the house while she was there and she eventually became a shrieker and gave birth to Ivan and Alexei. When Alexei was four, Sofia had died and the boys were first taken in by Grigory, the same servant that had cared for Dmitri. Then they moved in with Sofia's old benefactress until she passed away, leaving each of them a thousand rubles. Ivan became a withdrawn and serious young man who immersed himself in intellectual matters, wrote book reviews and articles which made his name and ideas known. Suddenly, at the age of 24, he returned to his father's home again, after university, and surprisingly they got along quite well. Alexei Karamazov was the youngest of Fyodor's sons and he was beloved by all who knew him. He was deeply religious and devoted to God, the monastery and its elder Sosima. Alexei's desire to become a monk was well received and his decision to go to his father and tell him of his plans stirred the Karamas of men to visit the monastery for the arbitration of elder Sosima in order to settle their disputes over money and inheritance. It was at this moment that the four men were reunited and set off on their journey. As they drew nearer to their destination, the monastery, Alexei felt a growing anticipation that something powerful and miraculous would soon occur. When analyzing the novel, we see that book one establishes the characters and their relationships as though it was already a common tale. Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, the father, he's a hedonist. 
and his character represents the archetype of the negative father in Russian literature. Ivan Karamazov, he is torn between faith and intellect, and his character represents the intelligentsia archetype. He is striving for enlightenment and rationality. Dmitry Karamazov is passionate yet detests his father, and his character represents an embodiment of the superfluous man archetype. Meanwhile, Alyosha is pious and virtuous, and his character represents the Christ-like archetype. It's about self-sacrifice and redemption. Dostoevsky's characters, they reflect on the philosophical issues of faith and uncertainty in the Karamazov tale. The religious topics in these chapters may be unfamiliar to some as they follow Russian orthodoxy. The novel delves deeper into these quandaries as it progresses. One of the most interesting aspects here in the beginning of the novel is Ivan's famous article in which he proposes that the religious courts should have the power to try criminals, arguing that they will obey divine law out of fear. But in reality, Ivan's true motivation is compassion without the religious authority. Humanity will be lawless. His article is honest in its effort to better humanity, but also dishonest in that it is based on ideas Ivan doesn't believe. This shows his conflicted mind. He clings to logic, even if it means suggesting things he doesn't truly believe. This novel is not only a tale of the Karamazov family, but also a reflection of Dostoevsky's ideas about religion, morality and the human condition. Each character represents a different archetype and struggles with different philosophical and moral dilemmas. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, where we will delve deeper into the characters and their relationships, as well as the themes and motifs of the novel.